I guess we all went in our subjects in one way or another because of infinity. Um, I think that that's true for me as well. Um, we want to know questions like, uh, is the universe infinitely large? Uh, is space infinitely divisible? Can you, can you look at shorter and shorter distances? And, um, and so what I'm about to say may strike you as surprising, but, but really the theme that I've encountered in physics is that when we see infinities, uh, they signal that something's wrong with our theories. They signal a crisis, um, which is a great thing. Uh, physicists love crisis. We love a <laughs> catastrophe um, because it brings on it brings on a revolution. It means that something is deeply wrong with our theory. It's not just predicting, you know, some something a little bit off in, in, in some measurement, some small discrepancy. No, it, infinity. So, so you know, infinity is never is never <laughs> the answer to any measurement you could do. So you know you're way off, and something has to give. <laughs> uh, and, and there are. There are many classic examples of this. Uh, one is the discovery of quantum mechanics uh, a little over 100 years ago. Uh, in that case, the crisis in question was, um, well, people had figured out how to do thermodynamics. They, they'd figured out that, that uh, hot bodies radiate, like if you turn on the, the, uh, the stove, you can see it glow red after a while, uh, or the lamps, they radiate. Um, they emit light. Um, but you could calculate how much light they should emit, how much power is emitted by a lamp. Um, and, and the answer was infinity. The answer was infinity basically because there are infinitely many ways that the little atoms inside the material that's hot can wiggle. They can wiggle in particular in very, very fast ways. Um, and, and every one of these ways will be turned on if you turn on the lamp and then, you know, the lamp gives off an infinite amount of energy and that would be a problem because it's not true. <laughs> and, um, and so people had to do something about it and, th and literally uh, quantum mechanics was invented as a desperate fix for this. I mean, Planck, uh, who, who came up with, with the fix, um, when the fix was that energy can only be emitted in certain packets of a certain size, which effectively turns off a lot of these wigglings. The ones that wiggle very fast don't get to wiggle anymore. Um, he, he was a very conservative physicist. He hated doing this sort of thing, but he had no choice. And that's, that's a wonderful uh, example of how a crisis, of how a catastrophe in physics can, can, can uh, drive us forward. And, and make us discover new things. Another example I want to mention just briefly is what haf happened afterwards. Um, people discovered how to apply quantum theory to the forces we know, electromagnetism, the weak and strong nuclear force that hold the nucleus together or sometimes make it fall apart. Um, the theories that do this are called quantum field theory. Um, and initially, these theories were also plagued by infinities. You started doing a calculation after a while, out comes infinity. And again, of course, you know you're doing something wrong. In this case, it was a much more subtle problem. And it took people decades uh, to understand how it really worked. Uh, but in the end, this, this property of being able to get rid of infinities proved to be incredibly constraining. It helped us zoom in on the right theory and, and know right away which ones couldn't be right. Uh, and in fact, this theory that was so dramatically confirmed recently, uh, the standard model uh, with the discovery of the Higgs that was already mentioned, uh, you may have heard about it, this particle they discovered at, at CERN in, in, in Switzerland. Um, people have believed that theory for a long time because there was other experimental evidence for it, but 40 years ago when it was put into place, the reason that physicists really started believing in it was that somebody uh, showed that you can get rid of all the infinities in that theory. That was an incredibly difficult thing to show. It's a very rare thing to happen in these kinds of theories. And so at that point, you kind of knew that you were onto something. So, so that's, that's the setting. And, and what I want to tell you a little bit about now is um, that we still have trouble with infinities. And, and, and it's still incredibly exciting. And I think it's still, uh, uh, we, we still have these examples of problems which are catastrophic. I mean, we get, we get answers which just are completely nonsensical and which are hopefully going to lead us on to some uh, dramatic revolutions in physics. Uh, and so I want to come back to this question of how large uh, the universe is. It's very large. Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, but we knew that we've known that for a long time. I'll tell you in a minute what that has to do with the universe. Uh, this is Angels and Devils, uh, out of respect for uh, my theologian uh, <laughs> colleague here. 
and, uh, and, and okay, but let me, let me back off of this for a minute. So, so we, you've heard the universe is large, okay. Uh, you've all heard the universe is expanding. That's fine. Um, <laughs> now, the question of whether the universe is infinite or not, uh, it used to be phrased as a question of, you know, let's look at the universe right now and think about how far does space go, okay? And, you know, it's probably not going to end somewhere where, you know, you fall off into nothingness. Um, but one thing that it could do is it could sort of close back in on itself like the surface of the Earth, except without the interior of the Earth. You have to th think that away. <laughs> but but it, could, it could be finite in that sense, uh, or it just could keep on going forever. Now, that is a very hard question to decide. We could have gotten lucky if, if the universe is small enough that, you know, you could see light going once around that that, 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 that uh, surface, then you, know, you could really detect that it's finite. But the universe is only uh, 13 billion years old. Light could only have gotten that far since the Big Bang. And so you know, it could be finite spatially, but we just wouldn't know about it because we haven't seen, you know, it, it's just like somebody who, like Kant, who never traveled outside his hometown, he has no idea that the, uh, that, that the, 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 the world is actually finite. It could be going on forever, who knows. Um, but the, the, the terms of the debate have changed. The terms of the debate have changed. We don't need to be able to answer that question anymore. We don't need to know whether space is finite or infinite. Uh, and the reason for that is that things are happening in time, which are very interesting. So the universe is expanding, but what's new is that it's expanding faster and faster. That's new both in a human sense. It was discovered only about 15 years ago. And also in a cosmic sense, it only happened about 7 billion years ago. So it hasn't been accelerating. Uh, that, that, that's when it stepped off the brake and stepped on the gas pedal. That's when the, when the expansion went from, from slowing down to speeding up. And now we see it's speeding up, and it'll speed up at, at an exponential rate, meaning that you know, it'll sort of double every few billion years. It'll double in size. It's like and the budget deficit, right? <laughs> it's, 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 like, it's, it's, it's like the budget deficit. And, and, That's the uh, other kind of inflation, I guess. And it, right, <laughs> right, and it leads to a crisis. Uh, just like, <laughs> right. So now I'm going to tell you what happens. This is a painting by Escher, actually, but it, it, it's, it's, it's the universe, OK? And the beginning of the universe is the middle of this disk, the center. Uh, and then time goes outward, OK, to the edges. And what you're seeing here is, is the doubling of the number of angels and devils as you go forward in time. But in order to show this in a finite picture, I had to shrink. So there's really an infinite amount of time as you go to the edge. Okay? And then you can kind of see that there's infinitely many angels and devils as you approach the edge. I had to rescale them. But you're supposed to think of them as all being the same size. What's happening in our universe is very similar. Uh, regions like ours are produced over and over and over again in this very large universe which is doubling in size all the time we call this eternal inflation literally like in um in uh, in finance um and and the, the the problem here is that you see even if, if you you can draw a circle here that represents the universe at a finite time um the circle is finite i'm not assuming here that space is infinite to start with but it gets infinite later it gets arbitrarily large later on, and stuff keeps happening, okay? Uh, and and that's th the reason that this is a crisis is that it makes it very hard to predict anything, and here's why. Uh, one way to see this is to think back of Hilbert's Hotel, which conveniently you guys already talked about. It may look like there are infinitely a many angels or devils. Think of them as different regions in the universe, and you want to predict if you open your eyes, where do you find yourself, in a black or in a white region? Well, there are infinitely many of both. It, it doesn't make sense to say it's a half-half chance because I can reorder these angels and devils so that there's still infinitely many, but it makes it look like there are far more angels and so on. So I, I, can, always, I can always reorder this. In this universe, there are <coughs> infinitely many places where you win the lottery. And of course, infinitely many places where you don't. <laughs> and on what basis then do we predict that you probably aren't going to win the lottery? <laughs> right? Now, the lottery question, OK, we can laugh about that. We all know what the right answer is. All that this is saying is that we don't know how to recover the right answer from cosmology yet. OK? Uh, but, but there are other questions, like what we should see when we look out through our telescopes, for which we need to know the answer to that question. 
And if something like the multiverse of string theory is right, there are many different ways that the laws of physics could behave at low energies. And to predict what we will see in an experiment that tests those laws, we need to solve this problem. We need to get rid of these infinities. When you're called the father of the infinite, well, except that I have repeatedly pointed out that there are more, more than one father, and there are a number of events in the catalog, but most people want to know who the father of the infinite is.